Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. Today in Dave's Garage, we're going to go back to the very basics. And when I say basics, I mean very basics. We're going to start with line draw and text output for an old 1975 Commodore Kim 1, which didn't have any of those things. My Kim 1 is equipped with a MTU visual memory board, which provides 8K, a 320 by 200 grid of pixels, and that's all you get. You can set memory, but it's up to you to figure out how and where to set it. There's no set pixel, there's no draw character, there's none of that. So we're going to have to write that from scratch, and that'll give us a chance to look at how graphics primitives are really built from the ground up. Now, normally you would write this in assembly language, but I ported the CC65 compiler to the Kim 1, which allows me to write in C. It's a little big for what it actually accomplishes, but it's much easier to read, and we'll get a quicker demo that way by going through the functionality in C rather than trying to grok the assembler. So let's have a look inside the source and see how it works. This is the top of the C source file here, and what we'll see is comment blocks, the include files, and a RAM font, which is a C file that's being included. We'll take a look at this really quickly. It's just a big block of memory where each group of eight characters is the definition for a single character in an eight by eight grid. This is actually a direct translation of a Commodore ROM, in this case, kind of a robot font that I found online, but you can use the Commodore 64 font, you can use the pet font, you can use whichever Commodore font you want. Inside the make file, you can see a bit of Python here, which is a little obtuse and opaque, I confess that, but it's a one-liner that goes and takes a ROM file and splits it into a C array definition so that you can actually include it into your source code. And that's precisely what we're doing here. Now we have some definitions. The screen memory starts at A000. Depends how you have the board jumpered, but that's where I have mine jumpered, so it exists at A000. It extends up to BFFF, which is almost 8K, it's 8,000 bytes. Next, we have definitions for the screen width, the screen height, the number of characters, how big a character is, how many bytes are on each row, how many bytes are on each character row, and so on. So let's have a look at set pixel. This is the very most basic single piece of functionality in here, which sets a single pixel on the screen given the X and Y coordinates. As you can see, the first thing it does is start with a base pointer to the screen, it then divides the X coordinate by eight in order to find out which byte it fits in within screen memory. And it offsets it by the Y direction multiplied by however many bytes there are in each row of pixels. So that will give us the actual byte that we're gonna work in. Now we need to set the bit. So for setting the bit to one, we're going to OR in a mask which is the most significant bit or 127 shifted right by the number of times that the bit position is. We AND the X coordinate with seven, which will give us zero to seven repeating and tell us where inside the byte the actual bit is going to occur. And that is how many times we have to shift down the high bit to get it into the right position. Memory is a little weird on this, and I think it works internally the same on the PET and 64 as well when it comes to fonts, but what happens is the graphics bytes are arranged from left to right in ascending order. So you start at the first top left, that's byte zero. Next byte is byte one, next byte is byte two, and so on. And it wraps around at the end of every screen line. What's tricky about it is that within a byte, it doesn't go from least significant to most significant. It goes from most significant to least significant. That means that 127 will give you the furthest left pixel and one will give you the furthest right pixel. And that's why we're starting up at the top of the word and shifting it down. And you can see that if we're not setting a bit, but rather clearing it, we're going to AND with the inverse of that mask, which will be a zero and all the other ones set to one. So when we AND it, that zero will force that bit to clear out and turn to black. Draw pixel is an even simpler shortcut for it that just assumes you're going to draw and therefore you're going to do it in a light color and not in dark. So it draws white instead of black. Now these two tables are translation tables because the Commodore font has things in Petsky order, but we're using the C runtime and it works in ASCII order. So to translate back and forth, we have two tables, which I think turns out to be probably smaller than the actual code it would take to convert in both directions because there are so many special cases for punctuation and so on. You can get away with, if it's in the range from A to Z, then adding or subtracting an offset to go from ASCII to Petsky and back and forth. But there are many other characters that don't map quite logically, and so it takes a fairly big if or a switch statement to get it right. I think that the odds are that 256 bytes, since I'm only using one of these tables to go in one direction, will actually be more efficient. Let's jump down to draw line, which is our first graphics primitive. It's going to use Brazenham's line draw algorithm, which I'll just point you at the web for and not fully explain here because the code is pretty straightforward. We're going to give it a starting X, a starting Y, an ending X, and an ending Y, and what color, white or black, that we're going to set it to. The DX and the DY are the slope in the X direction and the Y direction. 
Depending on which one is steeper, that's the way you're going to work. And so as we truck along across the lion's position, we're going to set pixel for each pixel that we encounter, and you've already seen set pixel, so all this does is walk the lion's position and call set pixel on each one of the pixels. Let's jump down to main now and see what the program actually does in its totality. So main is going to clear the screen, then draw the text banner, and then use its line draw function to draw a more a pattern on the screen below it. Let's take a look at clear screen. It's probably the simplest function in the entire program. First, clear screen is going to calculate the number of bytes that it actually needs to set in memory, and that's going to be equal to the screen height times the number of bytes that are in every row of pixels. It's then going to walk all of those bytes, setting the byte value in screen memory to the value you specified, which would be zero to clear the screen or one to turn it white, or you could set it to patterns, I suppose, if you wanted to. Either way, it's just stuffing this value in memory for 8,000 bytes. The screen moray pattern is going to do two things. First, it's going to draw a box around the area that it's going to draw the moray within. And we'll see that here with four line draws from left top to right top, left bottom to right bottom, left top to left bottom, right top to right bottom. That draws you a box. Then it's going to walk across the top of the screen and backwards across the bottom like this, drawing lines in between them. And then it's going to do the sides like this, and that will give us the moray pattern. Jumping back to main for a second, we can now see that the most interesting part of this code is draw text. How does it draw text? We saw that we had a font binary, but how do we make use of that to actually render text onto the screen? Well, draw text is set up to draw a string of text that's null terminated. First, the code's going to check to see if the current printing position has gone past the right margin. If it has, it's going to wrap it back to the left side and increment the Y position to move down to the next line. There's no scrolling yet. That will have to come later. So for now, if Y goes off the bottom of the screen, it just wraps back to the top. Next, we have a special case for the line feed character, which is 10 in ASCII. It's going to set the position of the cursor back to the left. It's going to increment the line by one, and then it's going to step to the next character. In all other cases, it's going to draw the character with the magical draw care call. In doing so, it will increment the X position to the next position on the screen. It will draw it at the current Y position, and it will draw the current character and then step that as well. So finally, we have to look at draw care. Draw character takes an X and Y position in characters, not pixels, as well as the character to be drawn at that position. The first thing it does is get a base pointer to screen memory and then convert the character that's about to be printed from ASCII to Petsky. Now we have an index into the ROM font, so we know where in the font we need to pull memory out in order to copy it to the screen. That will render our character. We do some basic checks to make sure we haven't gone off the screen or been asked to draw outside of screen memory. We then advance the Y position in memory by the number of bytes per character row. Then we step forward by the number of bytes that are in the X position. To actually render the character, we're going to look it up in the font 8x8 basic table based on the Petsky character C and the current from 0 to 8 I. What that's going to do is copy the first byte into screen memory, move down one pixel row, copy the next byte, copy the next byte, copy the next byte, and so on until it's copied all eight bytes into screen memory moving down. And with that, you've now seen how to draw pixels, lines, and characters, the ultimate in graphics primitives, and it was fairly straightforward. If you enjoy this kind of stuff, let me know and see it by subscribing to the channel. And in the meantime and in between time, I hope to see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage.